Plique azure is a technique that I learned from Frank Sudol about 25 years ago. Frank, uh, the late Frank Sudol, was from Saskatchewan, Canada, and uh, he was a mentor for me uh, a quarter of a century ago. It was a great time. Uh, he taught us this technique, and it actually has been adapted from uh, the process of using enamels in a wire frame to produce some really beautiful and expensive work. Uh, here we're going to use uh, the technique, but it's, it's not true plugizur, it's, it's an adaptation of that. We're going to do it by using one of these materials down here. Uh, the, the material that I prefer is this 3D crystal lacquer. This is a water-based material that comes from Secura Hobbycraft in Torrance, California. Uh, this is a large container. Here's a small container of this stuff. This uh, is... The clear stuff looks white when you apply it, and when it dries, it dries clear. Now, there are other materials that work. You need something with a fairly high viscosity, something like a little more viscosity than milk, more like maybe ketchup. Uh, I went to Michael's just to see what I could find, and I found these dots, which are acrylic dotting and writing paint. Uh, this works. Uh, you got some colors you can choose from there. And I also found this uh, gallery glass stuff, which is uh, also crystal clear. It's very similar to this material, maybe the same stuff for all I know. So what we're going to do is we're going to pr produce a, uh, something like this, like this. This is an example that was made about 23 years ago. We're going to put those, those uh, transparent or translucent panels into the uh, into pierced wood. Here's another example. This, uh, this, this one, it works in really thin wood. This is about 20 thousandths of an inch thick. That other one there was about oh, 60 thousandths. And the one we're going to be working on after a bit is probably about 70 thousandths of an inch. Um, this is, like I say, clear. So if you want colors, you need to mix it with some sort of a pigment. And I prefer to mix my own because then I know that the pigments I'm using are light fast. Uh, the Secura does make these colors, and there are other colors, they have different sets of colors, but I'm not absolutely certain that these are light fast, so I prefer to mix my own with using the clear. Uh, just the example of some of the uh, pigments that you can use, these are the black diamond pigments that are acrylic, uh, or people that use resins uh, like to use, and a lot of different colors available there. Uh, this is... Uh, Fresco color, this will work. Uh, regular dry pigments made for artists. Uh, these are a couple of examples. Uh, Windsor and Newton. You can also use various inks. Uh, here's a Dr. P.H. Martin's calligraphy ink. Here's a FW acrylic artist's ink. And uh, here's uh, some furniture, some Balin Master furniture powder. This one happens to be black. Uh, any of those will work. Uh, what we're going to use today actually is Dr. P.H. Martin's Fine Art Watercolor, uh, this in yellow, and I have already mixed that. I'll show you how to mix it here, but I mix it and put it in a syringe. So the syringe is what we use to apply this, and when it comes to syringes, you can buy these at, at uh, art supply stores, and you can also buy them places like Woodcraft. They're relatively expensive. If you're going to do much of this, you can go online and buy a hundred of these for less than fifteen dollars. Uh, which, if you're going to share with somebody else, a good way to save some money. Now they don't have needles. You buy the syringes, the syringe only, no needle on it. Uh, the needles, if you buy syringes with needles on them, the needles are very sharp to begin with. You have to be careful so you don't stick yourself. And they're cut at an angle, and when they produce a little uh, blob of the material off the end, it doesn't come out straight, so it's difficult to, to deal with. Uh, that's why I prefer to use these tips. Again, this is from Woodcraft. These come in different sizes, and this happens to be a, a, a 20 gauge. Here's what that looks like when we take it out of the package. Now, this is dull. It's flat on the end. And this will go on to that syringe. Here's one that's out of the package. It'll just go on by friction. These are actually, it says lure lock on there. And if when you buy syringes, if you're going to buy a bunch of them, you can buy them with lure locks. And basically, that's another little device on the end of this. And when you put the, this, this uh, uh, blunt needle in there, uh, you give that a little twist, 
and it's like threaded and locks in there. I haven't had a problem with these popping off, but that would assure that they, they would not come off when you start pressing on the other end if you use the lure lock. Uh, even if you get one of these small uh, blunt needles like this, you might want to get into uh, some really tiny spaces like these little tiny spaces here. If I wanted to do those, then I would look for something like an insulin syringe. Now you can't buy these without the, uh, the, the needles, sharp needles. You can see how tiny that is. Uh, but if you want to get into a really, really small hole like that and put some of this in there, you could do it with these. Again, you can buy a hundred of these for, you know, get that in the right hand. You can buy a hundred of those for uh, less than $15. So those are the things we're going to use. Uh, I have, uh, as I said, mixed up some yellow here we're going to use after a bit. But just to show you how you would mix this stuff up. I'm going to put a little bit in here. This, this we're going to use the crystal lacquer this time. We'll get, oops, that's plenty. Uh, that's probably a half a syringe full right there. And I'm going to use the uh, golden high flow acrylic. This is an ultramarine blue here. And basically, I'm going to just drop. Yeah, well, my, whoop, whoop, whoops, there was three drops. Okay, that's plenty. More than enough. One drop would probably have done that. And then we want to stir this up. Uh, you you want to be careful when you stir this up. You don't want to introduce bubbles because bubbles don't look good when you uh, apply them. But you can see immediately we have a nice dark color here. Again, this is pretty opaque now, but when it dries, it's going to be translucent. I guarantee you. So we'll move over now to a different setup here, and I'll show you how we actually apply this stuff. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to fill uh, these holes. This is this goblet is a uh, pretty doggone thick. This is about 70 or 80 thousandths of an inch thick, uh, a little thicker than I wanted to make it, but that happened. Now I've several hours ago I did Plikasure apply the yellow to this uh, particular spot right here. We're going to do the others to show you how that's done. Uh, I have a piece of paper inside here. Because if we make a mistake, uh, that, that whole uh, little blob of material can fall through, and I don't want it sticking on the other side. So this is going to support that. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to use the yellow, and I'm going, to, I'm going to back this off a little bit, and I'm going to go over here out of, out of your sight, and I'm going to just put a dot of that down here. The only reason I'm doing that is to make sure I don't have any dried material going up inside there. So I know now that what's coming up out of this needle, and I push that up and we'll see it appear at the end. There we go. So what's going out of that needle is nice, fresh material. And we're going to go in here like this, and I'll turn a little bit that way so you can see. And I'm going to basically start, and I'm going to try to wet the outer edge of this little pierced area here. And once I get that material all the way around that outer edge, then I'm going to kind of press a little extra and just kind of pull that across like that. And then we'll start the next one. Again, we'll go out here, get around the outside edge. Uh, let's go back to that last one. See that just popped open again? I didn't have enough material. So I'm going to go back there. I'm going to do that again. This time a little more material. All right. And we return to this one. It takes this stuff about three to four hours to dry, depending on how thick you've applied it. Okay, we're going to stretch this one across. And as I stretch across, I am pushing. It's hard to see that, but I'm actually adding more material. If you add too much, it will fall right on through. And, and the blob will fall out, and you can start all over again. But uh, you'll learn that if you try. Uh, the smaller holes are easier to do. The larger they are, as we as we move up here, each one of these is a little bit larger, and each one of these is a little more difficult to do. And here we go again, adding material. Okay, now that one was almost too heavy. Uh, one more here. Get around this one, and we're again we're going to start over here. And I notice that I catch that, the needle goes all the way across there, and I stretch the material like this while I apply at the same time. 
Now, this one was done earlier, and you'll notice, I, I don't know if the camera shows that very well, but you, you, you're almost, uh, you almost have a little clear window in here because as it dried, it got so thin that there's no color there. So we need to go back and apply some more. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, now that we're, we don't have to worry about it falling through, we can apply a nice thick coat here and leave it. And that's it. That's how you go about doing that. That's all there is to it. Okay, we, we can clean this. Uh, if you want to throw this away, that's fine. But we can actually clean it. Uh, we take that off. We put our little cap back on here. And I've got just some distilled water in here. And I'm going to fill an empty syringe with the, with the distilled water. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to just kind of squirt it in here like this. And clean that out like that. Run some water through there. And now we've cleaned that out. We can blow some air through here, uh, clean the rest of this out, and then we can use this needle over again uh, and save ourselves a little expense in the future. Thank you for watching.